our children at this morning. Come on down. Hallelujah. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> Hallelujah. Look at all these children. In this. Oh, oh my God. <laughs> okay. Okay. Easy. Easy. I'm frail. I'm very frail. Hi. All right. My your turn? Okay. Well, come on. We have. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> You can stand here with us. What are you doing? You're a mess. You're a mess. <laughs> really? All you're missing is a, a big sucker now, just that. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> She's such a mess. Hallelujah. All right. I'm going to try to pray for our children now. All right, let's put your hands towards these young people. Let's bless them in the name of the Lord. Father God, we come to you right now in the name of Jesus. Father God, we thank you for who you are. We thank you, Father God, for each and every one of these children and wannabe children. Father God, we ask that you would keep them, protect them in all their ways, in all their days. Let no harm come to them. Let them all grow to know you and intimacy father god and be and, and fall so in love with you and we just thank you father god in jesus name amen and amen <laughs> even got a little flip-flops with the with the lights on her flip <laughs> <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. He's always making fun of her, right? Oh, is that a child or oh that's Cindy, so she got him back this time. Hallelujah. God is good. All the time. And all the time. God is good. <laughs> Everybody, mm -mm. back in the Roman time, in 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 their kingdom, as 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 people will play sports or do certain events, and they overcame that event, and they were the victors. They were given a stone. They were given this white stone that they say most likely was made out of marble, and this stone had a name engraved in it, either their name. Or, or something they've accomplished. And now they were paraded into the cities wherever they came from, whatever city they lived in. They were paraded so that everybody in the city can see that that person has overcome something, uh, an event or whatever it is. And, and as they, they take this white stone and it was a privilege, it, was, it, it held many privileges to them that when they went to certain places, certain banquets, they had to show this stone and they were allowed in. See, when, when they also was, they used this stone for the people in the community or in the city would also uh, provide for them, made their provisions throughout their whole life. So they were always taken care of. So now we see that, right, through, through, through um, privileges that people get here, certain people, right, through uh, uh, sports players and all this and that. They make all this money that can support them. But this is how they got supported was through the community through having this white stone this white stone also was at times in the courtroom that if 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 the jury casted out a white stone it acquitted the person from whatever conviction you see so there was a lot of things with this white stone this white stone also added many other different types of uh, privileges to them so now by saying that we read in revelations 217 and he's speaking to the church of Pergamos but he he goes on to say here all those who have an ear and we all have ears right and in Revelations 217 says in the name of the Father Son and Holy Spirit he who has an ear let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches 
Does it say your past? It says what? The spirit. Come on. Does it say your mom or your dad? It says what? The spirit. Does it say uh, uh, those who, who, who've cursed on you? It says what? Does it say the negative thoughts that's in your head? No, it says what? The spirit. That's who we need to listen to. Not everything else in our past. Okay? So it says, uh, verse 17, it says, Now he, he who has an ear, let him hear what the spirit says to the churches. To him who overcomes. The Bible says that we are more than conquerors. I will give him some of the hidden manna to eat. That's the provision. That's provision. Those who are more than conquerors, God will give them provision. Now it says, and I will give him a white stone. And on that stone, a new name written, which no one knows except him who receives it. That white stone gives you the privilege to come to the Father. That white stone has a name on it that only the one that transforms you, that wipes away your past and re creates you a new creation for God, he has a name written on there. But you're not going to know that name until you get up there and receive this stone. You see, so there's a, there's a ticket waiting for you. Your reservations in heaven is set there with a name written on him and say you're going to be seated here at the banquet with the Father because you have the white stone stone to come in but while you're here you're going to have privileges you're going to have benefits and provisions from your heavenly father just like those people receive benefits from the community so that white stone has many significance and it also means that you're acquitted out of all the things that you're going to be brought before you in court he's going to acquit it because he's going to show you you have a white stone amen so today we have many things to worship our god with if you don't have one, let me know. I, I, I'll find one for you. Because there's many. I mean, you just can look back to yesterday. And probably yesterday, you done messed up somewhere. That somewhere you say, I have a white stone. I have a white stone. I have a white stone that was given to me by my heavenly father. And I'm here to praise him and give him glory. Are you here to give him praise and glory today? So let's worship him. Let's praise him. Let's pray. Heavenly father, we thank you. We thank you that that white stone, Father, is already written down in heaven. Our name is written in glory, Father. Hallelujah. Seated with you, Father, on the throne, Lord. I thank you. I thank you for quitting everything that's against me, Father. And by your blood, Father, we thank you, Lord. The provisions that you provide for us, Father. Making us overcomers, making us more than conquerors, Father. We thank you for what you do in our lives. We thank you for who you are, Father, and for what you've done for us on that cross. So, dear Heavenly Father, we thank you that the blood of Jesus has qualified us to come into your presence today. But we are asking to be sprinkled afresh by your blood this day. Cleanse us from every defiling thing. Purify us from the contaminations of this world. Cleanse our conscience. Dissolve all our guilt, fear, and shame. We receive your cleansing right now and rejoice in the magnificent provision of your cross and in the abundance of your grace and peace. Blessed be your most holy name. And in Jesus' name we pray and everybody says, Amen. Hallelujah. Let's worship him, church.
such a great God. Hallelujah. 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 Come on, worship him this morning.
Hear your people. Hear your people sing. That's us. Holy to the King of Kings. Holy, you will always be. Holy, you're holy forever. You know, when I was listening to this song on YouTube, I was reading some of the comments that people have made and there was one comment in there it says he is not just holy he is not just holy holy but he is holy 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 Lord God Almighty you are holy forever the holiness goes on and on and on. It doesn't just stop at one time. You're holy, holy, holy God. Hallelujah. 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 Hear your people see. Holy to the King. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. You are a holy God. A holy God, a holy God, a holy God.
Hallelujah. 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 I think we're ready to sing our opening song again. I think they're ready now. Sing it from your hearts. Come on. Sing it to the Lord today. Let this be your song to Him today. Hallelujah. Oh, yes. <laughs> My voice to worship you, oh my soul, rejoice, enjoy my King. Yeah. 
Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Let's give the Lord a clap of praise. Yes. Hallelujah. Before I have you sit, we had a, two that were here. They left right in the middle of the second song. And I just feel led to pray for them. Obviously, they're looking for something. You know, they, I talked to them just a moment before they came, when they came in. And um, they had come to last week's service, but they came to the morning. It wasn't, they didn't know about the sunrise. We didn't know they, we got up that early. So they said they thought they'd check us out today. And they left right after the first song. You know, but that tells me that they're looking for something. There's something missing in their life. And uh, I just feel like... You know, God tugs at our heart for a reason. He tugs at our heart for a reason. He's, and I believe that God is tugging on their heart. And sometimes we just don't want to listen. Sometimes we want to be stubborn. Sometimes we, you know, it doesn't fit where I'm at. Well, no. God says, come as you are, but you can't stay that way. Sorry. He says, come as you are. And I will uphold you with the right hand of my righteousness. He wants you broken. He wants you to come broken, beat up and battered and all that. He wants you to come. But he's going to fix you. Amen. This would have been a good message for them this morning that I have. But Father God, I lift up Tyler and Taylor, Taylor and Nancy. I lift them up to you right now, Father God. I know that you are tugging on their heart even now. Father God, I know that they're probably going back and forth and debating why. Now this is why we don't go to church and this and that. That ain't what we need. This ain't that. Father, I know we, we have all played that game from time to time. But Father God, I pray that you will increase on them. That you will increase that tugging in their heart, that nudging on them, Father God, till they find the right place where you want them to be. Whether it's here or somewhere else, Father God, it don't matter to me. My heart is that everyone comes to know Jesus as their Lord and Savior. That they serve you to the best of their ability, and I pray that they will surrender to you, Father God. We thank you, Father God. We see so many people come and go. And Father God, we want to see everyone when we get to heaven. We want to see them all there. We give you the praise. We give you the glory. In Jesus' name, amen. And you can be seated. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Well, good morning, everyone. <laughs> I'm so glad you guys are here this morning. Aren't you glad you're here? Hallelujah. We had three new faces, but now we only have one new face. Uh, Jimmy or James? He, he said he could be either or. <laughs> Which one do you prefer? Jimmy. All right. Hey, we have a... We have a saying around here, you're only a guest once, but after that, you is family. <laughs> we all need a church family. Amen? Hallelujah. Well, let me get up here.
that little wire clip you said you threw it away? Well, you didn't ask me in the right time. <laughs> we always forget. Hallelujah. Somebody's got to take the blame. wasn't me. She did show it to me. I thought, I don't know what that is. And then the next Sunday, I'm like, I know what that was. And I said, honey, do you still got that? Oh, no, I threw it away. You said you didn't know what it was. Anyhow, we're on. New house, new everything. Hallelujah. All right, if you have a Bible, turn with me to Ecclesiastes chapter 3. We're going to go a different route today. Hallelujah. It's a little loud because I was picking up my breathing. <laughs> Hallelujah. I know I just had you sit, but let's all stand one more time. Let's do our purpose. I know. Spiritual exercise. Up, down, up, down. Got to keep you fit. Amen? Hallelujah. Our theme, our purpose, why we're here. Let's do that. It says, we are a people of God led by the Spirit, keeping the next generation involved and ignited towards the purposes of God, walk it out. Galatians 5.25 says, if we live in the Spirit, let us also walk in the Spirit. Ecclesiastes, you stay rem, uh, rem, uh, yeah. Yeah, stay standing. I'm going to read verses 1 through 8 and then verse 11 a. Some of you have probably read this before. You've probably done it in a um, Sunday school lesson or some kind in your Bible study, your reading. You know, we've all done uh, different types of reading. I've never preached on this, and the Lord just really laid, laid this on my heart. And uh, so let's read. I'll be reading out of the NIV. It says, there is a time for everything and a season for for every activity under heaven. A time to be born and a time to die. A time to plant and a time to uproot. A time to kill and a time to heal. A time to tear down and a time to build. A time to weep and a time to laugh. A time to mourn and a time to dance. A time to scatter stones and a time to gather them. A time to embrace and a time to refrain. A time to search and a time to give up. A time to keep and a time to throw away. You find that out when you're moving. You throw a lot of stuff away. Kim, can I get an amen on that? You just, you just throw stuff away. Still working on that. A time to tear and a time to mend, a time to be silent and a time to speak, a time to love and a time to hate, a time for war and a time for peace. And verse 11a says... Today I want to start off with a question. Actually, I've got quite a few questions for you today. And the question that I want to ask you is, what is the season that you are in now? What is the season that you're in? We all go through different seasons in our life. Some good, some bad, some we want to forget, some we would love to bring back, even some do-overs we'd like every now and then. Anybody never want to do a do-over? I'd love to do some do-overs. There is a season in our life that brings us joy. There are seasons that bring us sadness. Even seasons that we want to question. You ever question some things in your life? There are seasons that we feel super spiritual. And then there are seasons we even question our spirituality even second guess our own salvation. You ever had that happen? You just you question yourself. But one thing that we can count on, seasons come and seasons go. 
And the writer confirms this one thing that I, if you don't get nothing else out of everything I'm going to be preaching and teaching over the next two weeks, I want you to get this one thing. Are you ready? He has made everything beautiful in its time. Everything in its time or season. So I want you to look to your neighbor, and I want you to say this. Are you ready? You don't know the season I'm in, but in time, God is going to make it beautiful. Amen? Even a healthy church will go through seasons. We all go through allowing, you know, as a church, you know, we have to allow God to do work in us. There's always, we go through what we go through because God is trying to do something. Teaching us, showing us, leading us, even at times correcting us. As Christians, as a church, you know, these are all these things that we go through. Then in time... We become the church that he wants us to be or the Christian that he's calling us to be. Got another question. I got lots of questions today. How many here, unless you got saved last week, is the same person you were when you got saved ever how long ago it was? Anybody here the same they was? No. That, that was a new season. And now you become seasoned in your walk. Hopefully you have. If you haven't, you need to recheck yourself, your salvation. Amen. I was sharing with Sharon with Sharon. Say that three times fast. Sharon with Sharon, Sharon with Sharon, Sharon with Sharon. I said, you know, I was sharing with her that of what the Lord was laying upon my heart. It's just been on my heart. What to to minister I said, you know, e even at times we go through different seasons, not often, sometimes together we go through a season, but also individually go through a season. I was saved on Mother's Day. She was saved on Grandparents' Day. So there are diff that was a different season for her and a different season for me. And so we go through these things differently at different times. But uh, hopefully we're not the same as we were when we first got saved. Hopefully you, you've gone through some stuff and you've become seasoned. And, and today and next week, I, I, I want to talk about the different seasons in life. As a Christian, as a church, you know, even in relationships, I think there's so many different types of seasons that we go through. And uh, I, I, I want to talk about what we can do to help us recognize where we are and the direction you and I are headed because of these seasons. We go through what we go through because God is trying to teach you something. He's trying to show you something, get you through something. Have you ever thought you were in a season you'd never come out of? Come on. Come on. Wanda got two hands up back there. Come on, we get into these things at times, and we feel like, I ain't never going to make it. I ain't never going to get through this. I ain't, never gonna, I ain't never been through nothing like this before. Come on. We do. And so I want to help us to recognize where we are in the direction that we're headed. What the direction the Lord is leading us in the church. So another question. I'm full of questions today. Who is happy in their present season? I got one, two people, three. You're happy in your present season. All right, that's good. Let me ask you this question. Who's ready for a new season? <laughs> Every hand went up that time. So you're happy where you're at, but you want to ready for a new one. Uh, that's okay. I guess you, you can have both. I want you to look to your neighbor and say, hang on. He's still making you beautiful. Hallelujah. Let's pray. Father God, we come to you right now in the name of Jesus. Father God, I thank you for your word today. I thank you for what you have showed me. I pray, Father God, 
what you have given me, I will give it away today. Father God, let your anointing go with it. Let, the, let, let every word that is spoken fall upon the hearts of your people today that we can hear, receive, understand, grow from. And I just thank you for what you have in store. In Jesus' name, amen. Like I said, I've been in prayer and meditation over what to do next, what, what, what to preach, what to teach, you know. It's hard to top, you know, Easter, Resurrection Sunday, you know, and we go through these things. We, we had our, our Christmas and the birth of Christ, and then we just celebrated the, the resurrection of Christ, and now what? You know, and, you know, one of the things that I don't want to do as a pastor is I don't want to become monotonous. I don't want to teach the same things over and over, although sometimes I have to because we don't quite get it. I've had people come to me and say, Pastor, I was listening to this preacher on TV, and he was talking about this. How come you don't ever talk about that? I'm like, well, you must have not been listening two Sundays ago because I preached the same thing. You know, but sometimes we don't, so I have to say it over and over at times. My wife gets on me. She says, you repeat yourself. I said, I know. They never get it the first time. You got to repeat yourself. Anyhow, just like with parents, we got to repeat ourselves sometimes. I, I did some word searches. I was really trying to listen. Um, I, I wanted to keep the church in sync in what's happening. I I, I, I realize around the world there are revivals breaking out. I don't want to miss God. I don't want our church to miss God. I, I don't want me to be the reason that we're not in sync with what's going on and what God is doing. So I've been praying about this, and God just, and all of a sudden he just started speaking to me. Season, season. And that's the title of this, is Seasons. We're going to talk about different types of seasons. You know, when the Bible, uh, when you read the Bible, you need to understand it is actually uh, written and spoken in, in two terms, spiritual and physical. It always affects both, your spiritual and your physical. Amen? Now, it's hard, like I said, it's hard to top the Easter season. And then the next big thing in the church, anybody know what the next thing that we celebrate? Pentecost, May 28th, is Pentecost. It's our Pentecost Sunday. It's actually 50 days uh, from Easter is Pentecost. So seven Sundays. So we're going to be getting prepared for that, um, on that. And then, of course, we can't forget Mother's Day. That's coming up on the 14th. Mother's Day next month, so we want to honor and, and celebrate that. But again, we don't want to just, you know, I, I've been in churches where you already knew what was going to happen. And, and that's the truth. I, I remember uh, on Mother's Day, I knew what was going to happen on Mother's Day. I mean, let me tell you what happened on Mother's Day. The mother with the most children got the most flowers, and the mother with the biggest hat got something. You know, I mean, we would do the hat thing, and the thing and you know and that's all cutesy and stuff and I'm and I'm not bad mouthing that but what I don't want it to be is I don't want it to be the same old same old I want us to grow and mature if you're not coming and you're not growing and you're not maturing something's wrong I'm not doing my job I'm not doing what I'm called to do properly or you're not doing what you're called to do which is to receive it. I can't make you drink the water. I can only lead you to it. Amen? I, I, I can't do that. I've had people blame me for their mishaps in life. Well, Pastor, you didn't do this. Pastor, you didn't do... You know, I can only tell you what you, what, what you need to do. I can't make you do anything. I've had so many people that tell me, oh, this is bad, that's bad, that's going wrong, this is going on. And I ask them one or two questions, Whoa, and then they get all offended. Oh, we always want to look for, especially in the, if we're going through a rough season, 
we want to find reason through somebody else or somebody else's fault. Sometimes it's our own. They're all important, but sometimes we can still miss the season that we are personally going through. Even though we get wrapped up in all these diff different things and what God is trying to do in us and through us. God's always trying to take you to the next level. Can I tell you that? God is always trying to take you to the next level. And every time you go to a new level, I, I heard this saying many, many times that maybe you have two, uh, new level, bigger devil. Come on. Every time you go to a new le level, every time you think you done did something, you're like, dang it. <laughs> Another bigger devil? Really? Another one? So... I, I want to share a story with you from, from a great prophet. And everybody will, uh, everybody agree that Elijah is a good prophet, was a great prophet? Can I tell you he had seasons? He went through seasons as well? You mean Elijah? Really? The one that called fire down from heaven? Elijah? The one that was taken up in the whirlwind? had seasons in his life he did so if you turn with me to first kings chapter 19 and i want to share this story with you today and then next week we're going to get into more of the seasons of a christian's life but today i want to show you something that you're not alone when you go through uh, you know elijah man what a prophet we've you know, we's hoping he's going to show up a couple of weeks ago when we had our Seder meal, except for Sharon, because she was sitting right next to him, and he didn't want him to show up just yet. I was ready for him to show up, but anyhow, but Elijah, let's read this, starting at verse 9b, and the word of the Lord came to him, Elijah, and he asked him, this is God speaking to Elijah, maybe God has spoken to you before, what are you doing here? <laughs> what are you doing? You ever had God ask you that question? Why are you acting like this? What, what is the matter with you? We've all had these questions asked at times. He replied, this is a typical answer. I have been very zealous for the Lord God Almighty. The Israelites have rejected your covenant, broken down your altars, and put your prophets to death and with the sword. I am the only one left, and now they're trying to kill me too. Doesn't sound like a great prophet to me at that point, you know. It sounds pretty, pretty fleshly. Come on, we get like that. We get like that from time. The Lord said, go out. He, you got to understand where Elijah is right now. He's hiding in a cave. <laughs> he's been hiding in a cave. You know you can't hide from God in a cave. You can try to, you can try to get yourself all secluded and think you're going to you know, get away and be all by yourself and have a woe is me moment. You'll hear that voice. What are you doing? Go out on the, get out, get out of this cave. Go up there. Go stand on the mountain. In the presence of the Lord, for the Lord is about to pass by you. Then a great and powerful wind tore the mountains apart and shattered the rocks before the Lord. But listen to this. The Lord was not in the wind. In the wind, uh, and after the wind, there was an earthquake. But the Lord was not in the earthquake. After the earthquake came a fire, but the Lord was not in the fire. And after the fire came a gentle whisper. When Elijah heard that, he pulled his cloak over his face and went out and stood at the mouth of the cave. Then a voice said to him, what are you doing here, Elijah? He replied, I have been very zealous for the Lord God Almighty. 
The Israelites have rejected your covenant, broken down your altars, and put your prophets to death with the sword. And I'm the only one left. He's still trying to stick to the same old sad song. Come on, we try to get somebody to get on our side, so we'll go tell our story again and again and again. Woe is me, woe is me. I'm the only one left. Now they're trying to kill me too. The Lord said to him, Go back the way you came and go down to the desert of Damascus where you get there. Wait, I want to stop. I don't want to read, read on. I really want to just stop where he says, Elijah, what are you doing here? Sometimes we see obstacles. We go through different storms of life. Winds blow, earthquakes, fires. <laughs> we go through all the things that we go through. In here, Elijah, he's having this little woe is me moment. And so God had to remind him of who he was. Not who Elijah was. See, he got into himself here. You know, you got to understand that Elijah had prayed. This is All this is because of a prayer. Elijah prayed a prayer. You know what that prayer was? That it wouldn't rain. It didn't rain for three and a half years. Three and a Man, what a prayer. That's a, you know, I don't know if for those of you that were around when, when our lake started drying up and we had docks sticking out of the ground and, you know, that, 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 was, a drought. that was the biggest drought I've ever seen. But that wasn't even a three and a half year drought. That was a one year drought. Can you imagine a three and a half year drought? And so... Everybody was affected, even Elijah was affected, but God took care of Elijah. He'd forgotten about how God took care of him, protected him, fed him even through the ravens and brought him water and brought him food. And every, I mean, three and a half years, come on. He had just called him out before that. He had, he had challenged uh, the prophets of Baal. Remember the story on Mount Carmel? And, 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 and Elijah, he was actually making fun of him a little bit. He's feeling a little cocky there, a little arrogant there. He's like, go on, call on your God. Maybe he's asleep. Come on, wake him up. You know, they were cutting him, doing everything. Because Elijah had made a statement because he knew who he, who he was in him. He had made a statement that if my God is, is who I say he is, and if your not, God's not, we're going to do away with that God. We're going to serve only this God. Okay, we'll agree to that. Well, then we know the story. Uh, Elijah, he filled the, the altar with water, not once, not twice, three times. He filled it up with water. And when he prayed, the fire of God came up and licked it up, the last drop of water. And the fire of God fell, and it was demonstrated who God was. Not who Elijah was, but who God was. And because of that, this made some people mad. Well, even though Elijah did that, stood up against everybody, a whole nation, it was just Elijah and God. And he wasn't afraid then, but then over time we go through things, our minds start playing tricks on us, we start hearing little other types of voices and things, and, and then rumor had gotten that uh, Jezebel had killed all the prophets. But he had forgotten, he had hid some, that God had hid some. Anyhow, I don't want to get into the whole story. If you never read it, you need to read it. It's a great story. And so word had got back to Elijah that Jezebel is going to come kill him next. So guess what? He got scared and ran and hid in a cave. So God's like, really, Elijah? Go out there and stand right here. Just stand right there. And here comes the wind. Whoosh. He said, but he, God wasn't in the wind. Whoosh. Here comes an earthquake. But God wasn't in the earthquake. Whoosh. Here comes the fire. He said, God wasn't in the fire. And then he spoke to him. As I was reading this, God showed me something. God had 
had to get a life in your tent. See, sometimes it's the wind and the fires in your life and the earthquakes in your life that will get your attention. See, it wasn't, and I know for me, when I came to accept Jesus as my Lord, and say, I was at an, I was, I was, I was at all-time low. I was going through some stuff. I was a mess. I, I, I didn't know what to think. I mean, I, but it took, it took all these fires and winds and quakes in my life to finally get my attention. Anybody know what I'm talking about? When you couldn't do anything else, <laughs> he finally got rid of all the junk. He finally, I, I threw the, the wind, the fire, the earthquake, everything at you. Because I'm trying to get your attention. And that's what he had to do with Elijah. He finally got his attention. See, because he had been threatened by one evil woman. See, what had happened, Elijah had went through a whining season. Let me ask you a question. How many here has ever been in a whining season? I see little fingers going up. Going. You ever had a whiny season? I ain't doing nothing no more. I ain't, I ain't, I ain't praying no more. I ain't reading no more. I ain't going to church no more. I ain't doing nothing. Nothing. It's a whiny season. Let me ask you a question. I mean, still in your whiny season. You got some hippies over here. Ooh, little pinkies going up. I, I, I'm going to be honest with you. Even as pastor, at times I go through whiny season moments and you know we all do we all get those woe is me not feeling very spiritual not feeling you know where, where's God I've been doing this I've been playing the keyboard for you know all these years and you know it's still th you get these whiny moments come on we do it I've been going to church but doing this I've been paying my tithes and Nothing happening. Come on. I'm good. I know this is hitting home, isn't it? Is this one hitting home with you? A little bit? You're like, move on, Pastor. I was going to buy the CD, but now I'm not. See, God was showing Elijah, look, the winds may blow, the earth may shake, and the fires may burn. But don't look to that. Don't look to those things. Why is it we always want to look in the flesh? We always want to see things. Faith is what? The substance of things not seen. That's where your faith comes in. It's what you don't see. There's times my, my wife has told me, you know, oh, we're you know financially in trouble or whatever. We've had issues. Anybody ever had financial issues? Come on, we've I've been through that. I remember one time she told me, like, oh, we're, you know, we, you know, finances are a little tight and this and that. I laughed. It just came out of me. I laughed. Why? Because I have a promise. I have a promise. The Bible tells me, see if I'll not open up the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing. Sometimes we may not see it with our eyes but we have to see it with our hearts, amen? We got to listen to that still, small voice because he's telling you, trust me, trust me. The wind's almost about to pass. The fires are about to go out, and I'm fixing to make you beautiful. Come on. I want to make you beautiful. I don't want, why, he, he's not trying to make us all squishy. Do you know that? All, all safe, you know, wrapped in bubble wrap, you know. He's not trying to wrap you in bubble wrap. He wants you to be able to stand the test of time. He wants you to be able to go through life. 
And it, it doesn't say when things happen. It doesn't say if things happen. It says when things happen. And things are going to happen. You're going to have winds blowing in your life. You're going to have earthquakes in your life. And you're going to have fires in your life. You're, you're going to go through some things in your life. He's trying to toughen you up. He's trying to get your attention. He's trying to make you beautiful. And that's what he was showing him. He said, don't look with your eyes. Yes, it's scary at times. It's so scary at times. Especially when these things are going on around us. When you lose a loved one. My whole world is lost. When I lost my mom, that that was that was one of the hardest things that I'd ever went through in my entire life was when I lost my mom. I didn't think I, I you, you don't even think you can go on. You just don't think you can go on. But guess what? You can. And you will. Amen. You will. You will make it at times. He said, listen to the whisper in your heart. In the King James, it says that still, small voice. See, we always want to be uh, uh, distracted by the, the loudness in our lives. Amen. We want to be distracted by all the, the rigmarole and all the chaos in our life. God isn't any of that. He's not in any of it. He may allow it to, to bring, bring you uh, correction or to bring you closer to him. Because he, his ultimate goal is for you to always do what? Call upon him. He who calls upon the name of the Lord shall be Sometimes he gets your attention so you'll just call on it. Lord, oh, I don't want to say that. That will hurt you very. You just told me to say you did. Sometimes he does things because you haven't called on it. You ain't prayed in a while. You ain't read his word in a while. So he will allow things in your life just so he can get to talk to you again. Come on. I, I, he just, that's not in my notes. Wanda, is it in my notes? It's not in my notes. He just spoke that to me. Sometimes he's just trying. He wants to commune with you. He wants to talk with you. He wants you to know him. He knows you. He knows everything about you. He knows what hurts you. He knows what makes you laugh. He knows. He knows what makes you cry. He does. He says, he's telling Elijah, look, I'm making you beautiful. I'm making you beautiful. So I, I, I want to share this with you, and I'll try to wrap it up because I'm, I'm, I'm preparing a stage for next week. There is a significance in the number of times that God moves. I mean, how many times did God move? Well, what was the first? Wind, earthquake, fire, still small voice. I want to show you something about the number four, the stability. Number The number four actually stands for stability. I'll prove it. How many has ever sat in a three-legged chair? Was it very safe? If they, I have seen them, but if you lean one side or the other, you're going down. You better have the number to Pratt's wrecker to get you up. How many's ever ate at a three-legged table? 
They don't work very well. I was over at Roberta and Cindy's yesterday, and she gave me a three-legged table. And, it, and, it, and I remembered that it was a three-legged table to put a plan on, and they, but she made this statement. Who was that? You or sent? It was you that made the statement that it wants to fall over. It always wants to fall over. She said, maybe Sharon will want it for her plants. I said, give me that thing. I was going in the yard sale. <laughs> That's a true story. She, ain't, she don't need nothing else. That sucker end up in my garage again. But the number four, it means it, stability. It took, Elijah, it took him four times to get Elijah's attention. Four times before he did. How many times do we clam up and try to hide from God? We do, we do it at times and we don't even realize that we're doing it. Elijah didn't really. He, he probably did see it. All he heard was, Jezebel wants to kill you. And that's all that started resonating in his brain. He forgot who God was. He forgot about how he called down uh, fire from heaven and how he, he prayed and it didn't rain. That's a pretty powerful prayer. I mean, I'm, I'm impressed when we pray over our food. Do you know what I'm saying? But to pray and it don't rain for three and a half years, that's a pretty powerful prayer. That's a good connection, you think? But he's forgot. Sometimes it takes some something drastic to get our attention again. And that's what he had to do with Elijah. Something drastic before we can, before we're ready to listen again. Uh, some of you may know this, especially some of our Hebrew scholars, but Yahweh is the number four in the letter alphabet. Yahweh has four letters. That's the actual Hebrew spelling. Y-W-H-W. Yahweh. Number four. How stable is Yahweh? <laughs> Come on. That's just a, it don't get no stabler than that. He's the rock. Amen. He's stable, stable. You can give anything to Jesus and, you know, come on. Had a t-shirt made up one time, Yahweh, not my way. Because I know he's stable. He's the rock. There's only four directions. I'm talking about the cardinal directions. North, south, east, and west. Four directions, right? Four basic elements, classic elements. Earth, air, fire, and water. Four. There are four seasons. Right? Spring, summer, fall, and winter. Four seasons. You want one more? Can I give you one more? This is really cool. I love it when I learn things. Genesis chapter 1. I have to read this one for you because this is really cool. Genesis chapter 1, starting at verse 14 to verse 19. Let's read this one. And God said, let there be light, in, lights in the expanse of the sky to separate the day from the night. And let them serve as signs to mark seasons and days and years and let them be lights in the expanse of the sky to give light on the earth and it was so God made two great lights the greater light to govern the day the lesser light to govern the night he also made the stars God set them in the expanse of the sky to give light on the earth to govern the day and the night and to separate light from darkness and God saw that it was good and there was evening and there was morning on the cool, huh? <laughs> That's pretty cool. On the fourth day. You know, 
I, I don't think that's a coincidence. You know, God knew what, what he was doing when he created the entities that dictate the four seasons of life on the fourth day. God, it just, to me, that just looks like God's signature in it. God knows, you think God knows what he's doing? He created the seasons on the fourth day, the four seasons. That's amazing. Next week, I want to get into the four seasons of a Christian life, the things that we go through. I, I really want to just kind of set up a little bit. I wanted to show you an example of a great prophet that goes through the same things that you go through. We all go through. We all go through stuff. I want you to think you're not alone. One of the biggest tactics of the enemy is to make you think you're isolated. You're the only one going through junk. You're the only one that feels like this. You're the only one that has a hard time with this or with that. You're the only one that don't feel spiritual. You're the only one that wants to quit doing ministry. You're the only one that, that doesn't want to move forward. You're the only one. But it's not true. We all go through seasons. Some good, some bad. But it's for everything. It's for what? To make you beautiful in time. That's the part I want you to get today. God wants to make you beautiful. I love that what Jeff did this morning with that white rock. I didn't know the white rock thing. I thought I knew more than Jeff, but I guess sometimes they think he'll get one on you. You get one. Yeah, no. I didn't know about the white rock, and I've read it and never, it just, you ever read something that just don't get it? That's part of it. When he said that and what I was preaching, I said, man, that's the white rock. He's trying to make us beautiful. That marble rock. One more thing I want you to say. You ready? i got to make sure I get this right. I want you to look to your neighbor, and I want you to say this. You're looking better already. But come next week, because you still need some work. Let's pray. Father God, we come to you right now in the name of Jesus. Father, God, we thank you that you make everything beautiful in your time. In your time, Father God. Not our time, not what we think. Father God, help us not to look at the circumstance in our season. Help us not to look at the winds blowing and the, and the earthquakes and all the things that go on, the fires in our lives that we just, we, we try to we, we try to control those things. Father God, that's not where you're at. You're not in any of that. Just like when we look at the news and the, that's all they want to do is put negative, negative, fear, fear, fear. You're not even in that. You already know the beginning from the end. You already know how this turns out. You don't, you're not in any of that. You're preparing us to go through what we need to go so that in the end that we will stand the test of time. That we will become beautiful. That we will receive that white rock. That marble rock with our name written on it. Forgiven. Saved. Redeemed. Whatever it is. Whatever it is, Father God. That's our invitation. Father God, we just praise you. I thank you today for your word and thank you Father God for the, what you're preparing us for, the season to come, the season that we're in. Prepare our hearts for next week Father God to really go a little deeper get a little bit more personal Father God. We just praise you. We thank you. We give you all the praise and all the glory. In Jesus name. Amen. Hallelujah. Let's give the Lord a clap of praise. Whew.
Hallelujah. I hope you got something out of this. We'll work on you. Hallelujah. All right. We ready to give today? Wow, I did good. First time right at 12 o'clock. Bam! What? 12. Man. Told you it's a new season. Wow, new season. Hallelujah. All right. Oh, the cross. We do. We have to pray over the cross. Heavenly Father, we come to you right now in the name of Jesus. Father God, we cling to your promises. We thank you, Father God, for every name that has been placed in our possession, Father God, to lift them up, to pray over them. We thank you for the answered prayers. We thank you for the prayers that are going to be answered, that are coming. We thank you for those, Father God, that uh, have come to know you as Lord and Savior. We pray for those that are going to come to know you as Lord and Savior. We ask that healing takes place where healing needs to take place. We give you the praise, the glory, and the honor. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. I started to hiccup like I did last night. He said, I hope you're not going to do that tomorrow. I just <laughs> season. All right, we ready to give? Uh, we ain't got much food in the food pantry, sorry. <laughs> I go Friday. <laughs> there might be a little bit in there, I don't know, something. Something. So. I think we got some rice or no, cocoa pebble something or another is in there. All right, are we ready? As we tithe and give offering, we are believing for our ministries to be debt-free, jobs and better jobs, raises and bonuses, gifts and surprises, finding money, checks in the mail, for me to be debt-free, interest and income, estates and inheritances, scholarships and fellowships, bills paid off, bills decreased, and blessings increased. Thank you, Lord, for meeting our needs according to your riches in glory by Jesus Christ. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Stir up the river. There's more than enough in the river. There's abundance in the river. Excuse me. Pardon me. Excuse me. Pardon me. Excuse me. Pardon me. Down to the river, down to the river, down to the river. 